You can get a helping hand. This is an intro screen. Okay, we've all seen these before. But I, I think what's important to realize is that this is uh this is all built inside of Figma and it's um it's really structured with a series of screens. It's not just one screen moving to the next. So I want to show you show you what what it does first, and then what we'll do is we'll dig under the hood and show you exactly how it's put together. So that animation comes in. We then click, and these things are all moving. And then we can close this, and it moves back. It brings us back to this uh, initial sign-in screen, and this basically loops around and back. Simple stuff, right? But a lot of people have asked, okay, so how are you making those animations happen if it's going from one screen to the next? And that's the trick. That's that's really where people tip, typically get lost. This is actually five screens, okay? And the five screens are really anchored on timing. Some of this is taking advantage of new tools that have recently come out with Figma. So if I, if I look at this first page, which, which is just called Home, and please forgive me, uh, this, is a, this is a bit rough. I have not properly named some of my frames here. But this first, first screen just has a circle. Um, and let's close these so that we can more easily see exactly what's going on. So we have this circle, which is a, and then we have this uh, little puppy dog shape. Now the puppy dog shape goes away, but you'll notice that this says transition wipe, and wipe just means it's going to like grow from this screen to the next. And what you'll notice here is that there's some some sort of invisible shape that's behind this one. And if we twist that open, you'll see that the transition is much bigger than the actual frame that it's in. That's because if you were to, that's because this circle is called transition wipe and it's going to smart animate to this really square with rounded corners but it's going to transition from one screen to the next and that's what's happening when we when that occurs if it was a square if it was just the, the shape of a frame it would make an oval it wouldn't really animate out smoothly and and the square you could make an argument that that should be a circle but i, I still need to accommodate like the filling in of these corners. So that's why wh that's why the transition actually goes to a square with rounded corners. So it still maintains the the the, the rounded edges. And you can you can still catch like a glimpse of it. But remember, this is this is really just meant to be a an approximation of what the prototype would work like. But um and we'll look at that one more time. Notice that when it begins, there's a little bounce okay it's almost like the the circle comes down and then goes out i'll show you how that actually occurs so if you go into the prototype right here first of all it's using smart animate but then it's using these custom easing tools and this is the new piece that was recently released by figma um, the ability to to customize the speed and direction that the that these elements uh, operate at that, that's that's a relatively new concept and you can kind of see exactly how that works um, so so I'll, I'll change the animation now so you, so that we'll be able to see a, a very different one and it really like it kind of hung there for a second it was really awkward you you wouldn't want that that you wouldn't want that to be your animation at all so I'm gonna drag it back down and, and what this is doing is it saying make it slightly smaller before rapidly going to the finish? Okay, um, so now we'll look at that one. Let me see how it works. Um, you can also change these to other easing uh, methods, but but I, I prefer to use custom because I, I can kind of fine tune it. You can also change the speed right here, which is important. Um, aside from that, you know, this is navigating it's on a delay. Um, now, th what this means is when this prototype launches, I don't need somebody to click or push or hover anything. And that's, that's another piece of this that a lot of people get caught up on. They're like, well, how do I trigger the animation? You set a delay. 
and delay is always always at the bottom um, when you set up any any new um, any new animation in Figma it will be set up right there at the bottom and then you can tell it okay here's when I want it to happen I could have it you know by adjusting this I could make it wait a lot longer or I could make it happen instantaneous um, I think it's important to leave leave just enough time for somebody to register what that dot is before moving to the full screen but again when we get here on this full screen I need this screen to handle the wipe of the color and once once you uh, you know this is again set up on a delay so there's nothing to trigger the next animation which is the which is this information coming in now this is a spot where I struggle uh, struggled a little bit because what I what I really want it to happen and I'll, I'll just I'll just show you real quick um, what I really wanted to happen was I wanted this to kind of break into um, I'll duplicate this over this still matters and I'll come back to what's going on with this primary button but I don't necessarily need it here um, anymore because I, I don't want I, I don't want that selection to occur I actually want this to transition in um, because right now as it sets up if we restart this you'll see that 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 um, status bar kind of lowers in and that bugged me that bugged me last night when I was working on this so what I really want to do is I want to delete that and I just want this this to fade in separate from the preppy puppy so what I'll do is I'll, I'll move this over to the next screen and this will be again another delay I'll make this delay happen relatively quick um, I will say move in and I'm going to have it, actually, I'm not going to say move in. I'm just going to have it dissolve. I'm just going to have it kind of fade in. Um, and we'll just say ease in. It'll just kind of do a simple fade. Um, it will navigate over to here. And it will happen automatically. And I don't want it to happen that slowly. But what I want to have occur here is I want this status bar to appear after this information has lowered down. So again, we're refining the animation, all right? So let's refresh, loads in, lowers down, fades in, okay? Keep in mind, each step along the way, I'm, I'm entering into a new frame. Not all animations that you do will be, uh, will, will need multiple frames like this, but if it has a lot of individual parts that are trying to do different things, and it's set up on delays, you'll probably need to break it up. So you need to, we need to start thinking about this in terms of timing and less about, you know, one frame one, frame two, frame three, okay? So these frames are being constructed much like you would um, any sort of, any sort of moving picture, okay? Um, the next thing we do here is we have so now that we've we've made it down here and this this is is um is fading in, we need we need this sign in button to to do something. So I've got it I've got this set up to while pressed because again this is a, a phone while pressed I, I you know I don't want to tap or drag or whatever I want it to I want it to change to this primary button so this goes from white to this dark green. All right. Now, what's important here is where the overlay shows up, because this is an overlay. It's not a page that's off, you know, down here. This, um, if it's centered, it'll just appear just kind of center in the screen, and that's less than ideal because you'll you'll see what happens. It that's not lined up. So what you have to do is you have to use this manual, and manual puts it right over. Now you could move it around if you wanted to. I wouldn't advise doing that. You want it to appear right over the original button. So that, that occurs, and you can, you know, you're pressing, you pull up. You know, if you press, it will go through. All right, so now we've moved on to a, another part of the animation that we haven't really talked about yet. But if you click, that, you know, you can press it, and if you move your finger, it won't trigger. And that's, that's 
it's operating much as a phone typically would. But we want this to actually trigger something, so this is where I use an on click, or on tap, because it's a phone. Um, on tap takes you over to a new page, so we're gonna navigate over. This is gonna smart animate. And what smart animate is doing is basically saying, hey, this preppy puppy um, logo, it started here and I want it to move up. And that's why you get the movement here. And then the other information here, this, um, this underline, I believe that it is all migrating. Um, well, no, it's, it's actually just appearing. Uh, let's click that. Yeah, so preppy puppy moves up and then that, that line work for the username and password, that just kind of fades in, all right? Um, I believe this is doing the same. So this is, n notice the timing of this, okay? This is important. So I click sign in, that moves up. This keyboard comes up somehow, and notice the bounce. That's another little, little intricacy. Um, let's close that again. Let's come back over because I want to I want to study this for just a second. So here, this animation is it's happening after a delay. After delay, bring in the keyboard and notice that the keyboard definitely has a bounce on both sides. And this is important. The keyboard is actually already on the screen and that's why it's moving. All right. The, the reason it's already on the screen is for Smart Animate to work, this content has to be present in the other frame. The question is, where is the content at? If you turn off clip content on this, scr this um, initial screen, you'll see the keyboard is just below the actual frame. So there is a starting point for it to move in, and without that, it would just kind of appear. There would be nothing, there would be nowhere to move from. So this, this is where we're using clip content. And a lot of times people, um, I've, I've gotten questions about clip content um, because oftentimes we can accidentally have these things appear outside of a frame. And it, it's sometimes it's confusing. Um, to get this to work, I had to, had to actually like drag the, the uh, I, iPhone keyboard into place. And that was a, that was a, that was confusing. That was hard to do because obviously the way um, the way this is set up, anytime that we have uh, every, anytime you have I information that goes off the frame, it, it wants to decouple it. You have to physically drag it back in to this frame. So um, you know, in this case, in this case, um, right now, as it stands, if I drag this up. It looks like it's it looks like it's outside of the frame. I'm gonna turn up, turn clip content back off. So clip content's on. If I were to if I were to drag this out, you see now it now it's not connected. And if we look at the prototype now, instead of it instead of it animating in it's just now kind of appearing. And that's that's not what we want at all. We want we want that to to really have that spring action as if it's coming up from the bottom. And it, that only happens if that keyboard, which is right here, is associated with the page. So we come back. All right? Now I, I saw a little bit of a little bit of leftover green down here. Um, I could make the keyboard a little longer, and it wouldn't it wouldn't um, have that that odd um, odd little s spot of green at the end. Another thing that I could do just to make sure that didn't occur is I could edit this ending animation just to end and not not to have that that um, little bump at the end. So now let's look at that. And now it just kind of comes in. So um, this is the ideal movement for a keyboard, by the way. You know, if you ever um, utilize any of these keyboards, they, they, they do often animate in from the bottom. Um, and and this helps the user uh, understand, like, you know, 
where do I need to focus my attention next? And the focus clearly needs to be on the keyboard because you're typing. Um, and then the final piece here is making sure that we have a way to loop back around. And that's what this X is all about. Fun fact, that X is also already present. I've just ha had it, it's set here in green, but instead of having it animate in, I wanted it to dissolve in. So I just changed the color from green to white. And that allowed me to kind of skip the extra screen just to get the X in there. Um, I could, if I wanted to really um, try to make this a little more fun, I could turn that X in the previous orientation. So um, it looks like that X is just slightly off kilter. Um, it's not quite a square, but I'll do that. And what we should see now is like when it comes in, it will twist into place. And there you are. So minor, minor things uh, to get this animation working properly, but it's definitely something that I want to wanted to share. Another thing I wanted to point out was that I, I wasn't going through creating everything for the screen. Like for the keyboards, there are a number of iOS keyboards that are in the community that people have created every possible orientation for keyboard that you want, light or dark, actually. Uh, yeah, light or dark orientation, uh, which is helpful because it saves you some time. It keeps you from having, and you know, it's like, iPhone SE, iPhone 8, iPhone 8 Plus, iPhone X. And by the way, all of these exist for material design as well. Um, additionally, I, you know, I didn't want to bother with, uh, with figuring out, you know, the battery indicator and all of that stuff. So I just went over here and got it off of this uh, Figma iOS 13 template um, that, again, is in the community. So you should not, you, you know, that's one thing I should have done. I should have just grabbed that plus right there instead of drawing one because my, mine's imperfect. Um, but the, the thing that I want you to do, the thing I want you to realize is that the community is full of resources. You shouldn't ever really start creating, uh, you shouldn't create everything from scratch. You just, it's not necessary. But you also should realize that, that to get these things to, um, to get these things to animate, in a way that's going to really mimic what you would find in a professional product, it's not just going to be one screen, two screens, done. It's typically going to be a, a process. And that process, as you can see, we used delays, we used um, smart animate, we used the custom easing controls that were just released, we used community assets. These things all come into play, okay? So um, I hope that was helpful. Um, and uh, yeah, I think we can move on. Uh, so looks like Couchbot's fired, which is good. And uh, let's see here. Yeah, why don't we jump into it? That went a little long, a little wee bit long, but um, hopefully, you know, I'll chop that out and put that to the side so people have um, really quick access. Um, I may do a more intricate video on that soon. But um, but I definitely I definitely feel like taking a minute to look at some of these animation options and also highlight the fact that um, that it's it's more than just screen one screen two might be beneficial to to fe people who are just getting their feet wet uh, using using Figma for the first time. All right, or maybe if you're you know if you're like me and you've used it for a while, uh, maybe it's beneficial because frankly. I have some bad habits that originated in the fact that some of these tools are some of these tools didn't exist so you kind of had to hack around and and find a way to to make that work and um and now we don't have to do that Planning plans. Planning plans. Planning plans.